Okay, speed keep things moving right along. Senator Warger is going to come up here. And he's going to talk to you about the interim legislative interim report. Senator, welcome. Well, thank you, Daryl. And uh, I do have some uh, good friends out there putting out some handouts to you, which I want to go over. I want to talk about the distribution of the gross production tax. And there's no question that in our interim committee, which was in Dickinson uh, the last few days, uh, and we've been in Williston, we are defending the existence of hub cities. And there are some that think it's time for hub cities to go away. And I just want you to know that uh, Senator Russ did a great job of leading me into that because the hub cities are the portal to the Bakken. And we need to bring workforce in here. And I'm not going to go any further than that, but we need to attract workforce. They've got to be attractive. There's got to be a quality of life there. And we just got done talking about education. We need good educational facilities in the Bakken, not only in the hub cities, if we're going to attract that workforce. No question about it. So with that being said, I hope that they're all uh, handed out. And by the way, Mike Holmes, I just want you to know, I do get excited. And I heard Leslie say she gets excited about what you talk about. So keep that in mind. The sheet that you have, we're going to be talking about a proposal. I want everybody to know where we're going long before we get to the next legislative session. The sheet in front of you, first of all, we're going to talk about the way it is, the forecast, and then we're going to lay the proposal on top of the forecast using the same numbers, because we don't know what things are going to be two years from now. So with that being said, and I know i got to move fast. I remember I had to teach everyday math right before lunch. Ooh, that was a real challenge. I remember one devil was talking about, well, that's a piece of cake. And this one kid said, oh, geez, Mr. Warner, you have to talk about food. So I won't talk about food. We'll move. First of all, you'll take a look. There are assumptions. This is the forecast for this biennium we're in. Average price, $47 a barrel. Have we attained that yet? I think we just may have touched it. We have, before uh, the first two or three months, we did not hit 47. However, take a look at the production. The production, uh, the first year we look at 925,000 barrels a day. Well, we're over that. We're sitting at about 1.1 million a day. And then we're looking at 950 per day in the second year. So uh, it's going to all shake out. And if the price gets up there and stays around uh, 49, that's going to be good. If it goes below, you need to know that. But this is, the, this is it. This is what the state of North Dakota is running on. There you will see 3,120.1 million, or that's 3.1 one billion total revenue that we expect in the state of North Dakota. HMA Nation, Fort Berthold Indian Reservation, they get half of all the uh, taxes that are generated for oil on the reservation. They'll get 223.2 million. We subtract that off and now we move to the state portion which is 2,896.9 million. That has to be broken down into two taxes. We have two taxes, 5% gross production, 5% extraction. Now, when it comes to the sharing, the in lieu of what you've heard a lot about, the in lieu of property tax, gross production. That's the one we're interested in. But I'll quickly move along so you can see the whole story. You'll see the gross production tax there is $1,457.1 million. And you may take a look at that and you'll say, if they're both 5%, why is one more than the other? Because we have stripper wells that do not pay the extraction tax. Therefore, there will be more money in the gross production tax side. Turn to the next page. This is the current, this is the current 
distribution. We call the blue the 1% stream. That's what I call it. Over on the orange on the other side, I call that the 4% stream. This is where we're getting in trouble. If you look at the 1% stream, and this is what's going to be changed, you will see hub cities. You will see hub city schools. You will see money for the county schools that are just over the five million per year. You know, you all know that. County, that county political sub gets the first five million of this 4% stream. Some counties don't get that, but they get the first five. State gets nothing. And what we did is we changed the formula for those counties that don't, the schools get, uh, I believe it is, uh, yeah, 40, or they get 35%. But if you go, if you're in this school district that's in a county that goes over the five, you get 5%. And so if you're just over, you uh, take a licking on your funding. Therefore, we have to have some money to make them whole. And that's what that is, where it says school counties, 16.1 million. And then you will see the energy impact grants there, 29.1. We want to take those four things out of there and move them over to the 4% stream over to the orange side. All right, I'm going to go to the proposal and I will be coming back and we will be taking a look. We will be taking a look how they compare. Turn to the next page. This is a proposal. I am looking for input from people on this. There are some things that are not taken care of yet. We still have decisions to be made. You'll notice over on the blue side, the things I just mentioned are gone. They're gone. And by the way, this is the fifth proposal I put together because I have been bouncing it off of people because I've been talking to a guy by the name of Ryan Score who comes from up in the Williston uh, Wild Rose Ray area and he works in the state treasurer's office and he's a tremendous help. Uh, my first proposals didn't make it so I had to get rid of them and go with this, this one. I'm going to now go down the line on the orange part or the 4% stream. There you will see that 80% uh, of that 1,457.1 million is 1,165.7 million. That's the part we apply the formula to. What did I say? The first five million in every county, they get it. Now the county doesn't get it, but all of the political subs in that county get it. So as we move down, you will see the state got nothing. And you will see 101.6 million that was, take, was given to the counties. Then we move down and I subtracted it out and I, I end up with 1,047.1 million. And that's after the first five million is deducted. This is where there's a change. Currently, it's 3070. But remember, hub cities, hub city schools, the energy impact, and the money to make those other schools whole was over in the blue side over in the 1% stream. I have pulled them over, and we're going to go to 60-40. And as I do the calculations, they almost are identical. Oh, there's a, somebody gets a little less, and somebody gets a little more, but it's not significant. It's almost a wash. For all practical purposes, it is a wash. And this is the part I want you to take a good look at. Well, don't forget, we have eight counties that don't make it. 
And there they are. You'll see them. Counties receiving less than $5 million per year, eight of them. $11.6 million. That's all they get. By the way, Bucknell County gets most of it. Now we go to the other side, the side that most of you are going to be interested in. And I want you to circle some things, and I want you to think about it, and I want input on it. Well, when we calculate it, it ends up being $508.7 million. If you look back on the current, the current one, it is... Uh, that we're going to split for these nine counties, these nine counties that get five million a year of this revenue, it was 409. So there's about approximately a little over a hundred million dollars more that we're going to be dealing with. So the percentages are going to be changed. So if you can line it up so they're kind of side by side, uh, that would be good. Starting out, I put in a general impact fund. I don't know, maybe some of you think that we shouldn't have it. But I put it in there, 5%. I'll come back and talk about the energy impact fund when we get all done. Then, and that, that, rev, that is 25%. Point four million. And before I go on any further, moving the hub cities over there was something that we thought about before it was put in legislation to have a study. We knew we had to get them out of there because there are people in other parts of the state that say they're getting way too much money. And people look at it and say, you know, I'm, we're not getting that in our community. Why should they? But they have no idea about in lieu of property taxes. They don't understand how we've been hammered out here. And we are finally getting to a point where we have some quality of life back. They don't understand that. So you've got to forgive them. you just got to go out there and fight harder and explain to them. The needs are here. As one of my good friends in the house, always said, oh, we're okay, well, you know, we just, we, we'll, we take care of needs, we just don't want to worry about wants. Well, I want to tell you, sir, it's needs. We're not dealing with wants out here. We just want to make sure that we can take care of our ne the necessities. All right, the next one, which fits right in with what we got done, I put in 2% for an impact fund for schools. Why? Because if it's an impact fund, it's not discounted. And it could be used only for capital construction and paying down debt in the schools. Now, you might say, well, why didn't you put more in there? Because if you put too much more in there, it affects the total funding in the foundation aid program statewide. And don't worry, the bird dogs in the east are going to say, ah, 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 ah. we don't like that. So we got to be a little bit careful. We'd like to put another percent in there so that we could have more money to help the schools out here in their building projects so they can at least take that money and it's all theirs. And if they get a grant for a half a million or a million, it makes a difference. So. That needs to be debated. The school people, we're going to be working very closely with them to decide on that. Where would it come from? Well, it would come out of the school funding further down for the regular schools and out of the hub city schools. And we've got to have everybody on board before we do it. Because when we go in, folks, I want everybody 100% behind us from the West. Now, if you go down the line, you take a look at the counties. The counties under the proposal are 48%. Under the old way, they were 60%. But remember, it's 48% of more dollars. Therefore, if you look at the final, under the old 
method was 245.5 million, and under the proposal it's 244.2. To me, that's a wash. So the counties are taken care of. We moved to the cities, 20%. That was 81.8. If you look at the cities, under the new proposal, it's 16% and it's 81.4. They get a little more. Then we moved to schools. The schools were 5% at 20.5. Then would you take a look up in the blue column? 16.1 has to be added on to that. It was in two different places. That's 36.6. Well, if we do 7% of the schools, it's 35.6, which is almost the same. And we have 2% in a impact fund for school construction and school debt. See, Steve, I think they would let us buy with that because it's pretty much the same. If we can sneak another one out of there, I think we should, but we'll let the school people be the ones that decide that. Moving down, this is another one that's a little bit contentious in some areas. Townships. Townships were getting three and three. One was on population, one was on road miles, and the one that was shared. And by the way, it was only shared amongst the big nine, or yeah, Botno was in for a while, the big ten. Not all of them, but they shared that. And I, and I will say that there were some counties that, were, that have a lot of townships that didn't like that, that they were shared. But it wasn't a bad concept because everybody was kind of impacted. Uh, you might be in a county that didn't have a lot of production, but you had a lot of trucks rolling through there. However, we have to do some looking at this, and I'll tell you why. Because there are those out there that took a look at this and said, those townships are getting way too much money. They're getting to be fat cats. I've looked at their balances. And therefore, we're going to take some of that money and move to the non-oil townships. That was a fight. And we gave in on the Senate. That was a House versus Senate. It always is a House versus Senate. We gave in because we needed to get out of there. But guess what? The governor vetoed it. So, we won. <laughs> anyway. I want you to know the way I put it in there, and this is debatable, I put 4%. So under the 3 and 3, it's about 25 million. Under the 4% of the new amount, it is 20.4. That's about 5 million less. But here's what I'm advocating. You keep your money. You don't share it with anybody. So if you're in the big four, if you're in Montreal, McKinsey, Williams, and uh, Dunn, you're going to be pretty much in the ballpark. Now, there's some other counties, such as Burke, Bowman, uh, Stark, Billings, would, they, they would lose, lose some funding. And, uh, but where's the action? And we have gotten to a point where, with the surge money, we were able to take care of a lot of the needs. Now, are they, are they done? No. But remember, those four counties is where the activity is. That's where the townships are getting hammered. And so I, I, that needs to be debated. And needs to, I need input on that. So, I'm, I'm open. Anybody says, hey, no, you're, you got to think about this, this, and this. Uh, I'm glad, I'll be glad to hear or listen to it. But so that township portion is something you need to keep in mind. Then we move to hub cities. Remember, hub cities were in two places in the old system. They got 9% and they got money out of the blue or 1% stream. Well, we moved them over. We want them to be in complete percentage. I want you to understand one thing. It's, a, it's not, for the hub cities, it's, a, it's not a benefit necessarily to move over completely on percentage. 
because in that blue stream, that was hard money. They got it. No matter if the price of oil was high or low, they got it. If the price of oil went way down, they got it. Now they're going to have to rise and fall with the price of oil. So, uh, and I'm not going to go over into how we calculated it over in the blue stream, but there's a calculation. So as you can see, the hub cities get 16%. And the way it's been, because of employment numbers in mining, Williston gets 60, Dickinson gets 30, Minot gets 10. Hub cities will sit down and work that out. Just so you know, Minot thinks that they're getting the short end of the stick. And we'll have to work on that. And we got to get that worked out before the session. You people don't need to worry about that. We'll get together and we'll hammer it out. Then you have Hub City Schools. And I gave Hub City Schools only 2% because I took one of their percents and stuck it in that <coughs> impact fund. And, and of course, Mr. Campbell uh, will be uh, talking to you more. Uh, we already, you already know a little bit about it, but uh, we'll be talking some more. But I think you're better off putting that 1% up there than you are keeping it because they discount 75%. Rather have my debt. That's right. So as you can see, there is the changes that we're proposing. Now, a lot of people, after I get done with that, they want to say, well, well what about the, this fund and this fund and the buckets and where's this? So now I will quickly, I will quickly show you the rest of the distribution, which would be under the core current current formula. You will notice there's the red. The red comes down to the bottom. And you'll see the legacy money is taken out down at the bottom. Remember they get 30% goes into that legacy fund. Now, the rest in that red bucket goes or that red fund at the very bottom goes to the buckets. And you got the one that you'll see is the one from the current plan. The 478.7 million. I, you'll notice that uh, the state gets uh, a little bit less in the, in the proposal. Uh, I do, I, and if uh, I'm not going to go over them, but you can see how Hub cities on page four, you can see under the current plan what they get and under the proposed. They're very close. And the same with the hub city school. You can look that over for yourself. Now, we, you got that, that money at the bottom for the, it's the state. It'll go to the state buckets. Would you move to page five? So you want to see where does the money go? People always want to know. This is the extraction tax, the 5% extraction tax. Now in this one, legacy gets their 30% right off the top. The next 20% goes to the resources trust fund. And most of that, as you can see on the side there in the blue, goes to water. That helps support Southwest, WAS, Flooding in Fargo, flooding in Minot, that's where that money comes from. That, just so you know, the money for the Fargo diversion will come out of there. They have been appropriated $570 million. They have not received that, and nor have we collected that. They have received about $120 million, which they've used to shore up the inner part of the city. But whenever that takes off, it's not coming out of our general fund. They'll have to wait in line like everybody else for their portion as we go forward. Same with mining. But we want we don't want these communities to flood. So we need to they need to get their plans in place and take care of them. Now the next one, the common schools trust gets 10% of the extraction. We do not 
bend the principle. That has been there since the beginning of statehood. Those of you that know what a school section is, that's where the money has been going since 1889. That's where it goes. 128 years ago today. 100, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Birthday of the state. Yeah, so all of a sudden, folks, it was, it dribbled along, didn't have much in it. Then when the, all of a sudden the Bakken took off, it has 3.7 billion. And there are people out there that say, we should spend that for building schools. The minute you spend it, you'll never have a revenue source. And so I would fight that to the end. And do you know how much it put into our Foundation Aid last time? Over 300 million. And it's getting better and better and better. Talk about property tax relief. That's it, right there. And the state, it helps with our other taxes, because we don't have to levy other taxes. But that's growing. Then there's the Foundation Aid Stabilization Fund. That is the backup fund. When we were short of money this past biennium, that's where we got it from. That's why schools were kept whole. That's why schools didn't end up taking big cuts like some of the other departments in state government did. And so we did put it on the ballot. It has been changed. This should be named under after Senator Shively because he's got it set up. So there's money there to back up any shortfall. And he's got a program where he's putting money into a low interest capital construction fund so that schools can borrow money and build schools and not have to pay an arm and a leg for interest. So that's a good thing. It's just started. It's just getting going. Okay. And then uh, you'll see that there's a red bucket. Now, the last page. Quickly. There it is. The general fund gets in two different spots. It's in red, 400 billion. The black one is property tax relief. I'll tell you what that is. That's the fund county social services. We're collecting it ahead of time to make sure we got it. That's what it's for. Then you will see the budget stabilization. That's our, that's our rainy day fund. That's our backup fund for our state government. We spend it all. We were able to already put $75 million back in because we had more turn back than we thought. Then you'll see the Lignite Research Fund. The first time it's been in there, Mike, $3 million. Helped the Lignite industry. And then you will see the blue, which is the SIP Fund. Now remember, that's the bottom bucket. And I won't talk about the disaster relief very much. It's, it's $20 million. If it's full, it doesn't take on anymore. But that's where people want more money to come into that blue. And so if they can, if they can chisel us down up in the gross production tax, there will be more there to use for non-oil country revenue to help with whatever. So ladies and gentlemen, I wanted you to see that. And I'm open to any any uh, any input. And if you want to see the county's production, the last page, seven, who's the big four? And then you got the kind of a couple of twos, and then you got threes, and then you got the ones way at the bottom. So with that, thank you very much. I know it's time to eat, and I can talk to you during the eating time. Daryl, thanks.